So this is a problem as mentioned in my blog post from Paul Lockhart's excellent book called Measurement. And um, it's a problem about the diagonals of a regular polygon. Here you can see that I've just got an equilateral triangle and um, there are no pol uh, diagonals. So I'm just going to increase the sides, number of sides here to make this a square. And now we have a diagonal. And the two angles here, as you can see, are both the same. They're both 45 degrees. And Lockhart asks for any um, regular polygon, so any n-sided regular polygon, are these angles always equal? So um, they are for a four-sided regular polygon. For a five-sided regular polygon, they're all 36, as you can see. For a six-sided regular polygon, they're all 30. So it seems to be the case. Um, and uh, for a nine-sided polygon there, they're all 20. I can keep on increasing this and you see that they are always the same. So I guess it's our job to show why that's the case and that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. So I'm just going to take that off there and pull up a different geometry file. There we go. So um, I've got a pentagon, a heptagon and a nonagon here. And the reason why I'm just using odd-sided regular polygons is just because it shows a, a nice sequence. I could have chosen even-sided regular polygons. Um, but the, the arguments are exactly the same. So if I do it for odd-sided regular polygons, then I've basically done it for even-sided regular polygons as well. So I'm going to start by constructing some diagonals on this pentagon, from D to A and from D to W. And there's a few things that I just want to make clear before we start. First of all, the triangle DEA is congruent to, to, to triangle DCB, which means they're exactly the same shape and exactly the same size so um, they are both congruent triangles and if you're not sure why that's the case just pause it a second and make sure that you understand that before we move on also what you'll notice that is that DEA is an isosceles triangle because this length here is the same as this length here so I could label these angles so one to two there's the pen there it is uh, I could label this angle here and I'll call this X which would mean this was also x as well. And in sim similarly for DCB, because this is congruent to DEA, this is x and this is x. And what I'll do here is I'll just call this y. Just make this a y. And every interior angle, so the whole interior angle D there, C, the whole B, the whole A, they are all the same as y. In this case, they're all actually 108 degrees for a regular pentagon. But for any regular n-sided polygon, all the interior angles are always the same. Um, there is one other thing about regular polygons. For this pentagon, I could construct a triangle here, which is in fact an isosceles triangle because this side and this side are the same, and another triangle here. And I could keep going all the way around the pentagon until I had five congruent triangles. Um, and this, this, will, this, this fact here that we can do this, construct these triangles, will also help in, in solving this problem or, or forming an argument for the entire problem. Now, now we've gone through that, I guess the main thing for this part now is to show that this angle here is also x. We've got x, we've got x, we need to show that this is x as well. Firstly, notice that x plus x plus y, 2x plus y, because we've got a triangle there, is equal to 180 degrees. Now, if we look at this triangle here, WAB and WCB, then you'll notice that this entire interior angle here is y which means that because we've got two triangles and they're exactly the same, that this line bisects y, which makes this angle here y over two and this angle here y over two. Now, because both of these angles add up to y, we know that this one has to be two x. Now, the reason it has to be two x is because we've got that two x plus y is 180. And for any triangle, the angles have to add up to 180. So the y plus the, plus the 2x is 180. 
now we've got that, we can use a well-known circle theorem. We can use the theorem that the angles at the circumference of a circle is double the angle at the center. So I'm just going to construct a polygon here. Show this. And I'm going to change its color. So I'll change it to blue. Click on. Hopefully that's worked. No, it's not. No worries. So this angle here, 2x, is double this angle here. Because this is 2x, this has to be x. So we've shown that all of these angles are the same. And we just have to do that for every single other case forever and ever. But we can't do that. We have to kind of somehow form this argument. And the way that I've done this can be applied in a very similar way to this, this problem here, to the heptagon, to the nonagon, to the 11 sided polygon, etc. So I'm going to do it for a heptagon as well, and you'll see that it's very similar. I'm just going to construct the diagonals here first. And um, in a similar way, these two triangles here are congruent. I'll label this angle A, which means this is A. And because this, these are isosceles triangles, this is A, this is A, and I'll call this the inter each interior angle B. So this is B, this is B. Every interior angle is B in this heptagon. Now, um, we know, first of all, that because we've got A, A and B, that in this case, 2A plus B, sorry about the writing, is equal to 180 degrees quite hard to write in this. There we go. Um, let's construct the other diagonals. Now in the same way as this, this problem, I'm going to construct a triangle here. And I could keep on going all the way around the heptagon. There'd be seven con congruent triangles in this case. But this angle, the entire ang interior angle G here, is B. And again, because this has been bisected, we have this as B over 2, and this is B over 2, which makes these two angles add up to B, which means that in a similar sense to this, this here would have to be 2A. And using our circle theorem, angles at the, the centre are doubled angles at the circumference, this has to be A. So we've shown that this is A, now we just have to show that these two are also A. And we can use the circle theorem again, so we can use it twice over in this case. So I can construct a polygon here. And again, I'm going to try and change the colour of this. There we go. Um, and as you can see, this is 2A, which means that because this is congruent, this has to be 2A. And this has to be 2A, which makes this entire angle at the centre 6A which means that the angle of circumference is 3A. Now, that means that because we've already got an A, this and this both have to add up to 2A. And because this triangle here, JLF, is congruent to JHG, then this angle is the same as this angle. They both add up to 2A, which means that this is A and this is A. So again, we've shown that all of these angles are the same. And we could go on to the non again and we could do the same thing. Um, and we'd just be applying the circle theorem again another time over, so three times over in this case, but doing exactly the same, using exactly the same technique. So for me, I think that does that is an argument to show why those angles would always be the same. Um, and I hope that it's it's also that's also satisfies you as a, as an argument for why for any n-sided polygon it would be the same. I'd really be interested to know what other, uh, if anyone else has got any other ideas on how you could show this, how you could prove it. Um, and uh, it, like I say, it'd be great to hear from you if you have got a different way of doing it. Uh, I, hope, I hope that was helpful. And um, thanks, thanks for listening. Bye.